Well, really, there's been a void up, up till now in terms of quality parameters, criteria that would indicate that someone has had a quality surgery when it comes to lung surgery. When patients go and buy a television or a household appliance, they don't just go out and buy the cheapest available appliance. Most people will go and research it. They'll go to Consumer Reports or something like that and find what makes sense to them in terms of a, uh, what their needs are. That's not available until now with regards to chest surgery. And that's really what we were trying to address in this study. Finding something, some measures of quality so that patients, that were meaningful to patients, uh, so that they could assess whether one program or another would meet their needs when it comes to chest surgery. We came up with 13 measures. We put it together a group of uh, experienced thoracic surgeons, chest surgeons, and chest surgery nurses who've been doing this for many years and came up with 13 specific criteria, specific indicators to tell us that yes, afterwards if these have been met, you've had a pretty good quality surgical experience. One off the top is whether your pain is assessed and efficiently and expeditiously dealt with in the post-operative period. So we measured whether patients were assessed for pain and if their pain was above a certain level, whether they received adequate pain control within a short period of time and whether that pain control was reassessed again within a short period of time. Those are meaningful things to patients who are looking towards getting lung surgery. Another issue would be a proper history. It makes sense if you're going to operate on someone on their lung to know whether they smoke or not. And it's always uh, been interesting to me to find patients who've gone t for lung surgery and haven't been even asked that question. So we looked to see whether that was being done in our practice and we were pleased to see that in 100% of our patients they were being asked about their smoking and if they did smoke they were being that was being addressed they were being given reasons to stop smoking though they may seem obvious to a smoker that that needs to be repeated and they were given help in quitting those are important quality indicators we also looked at whether or not pulmonary function tests were done before a piece of your lung is removed. It just seems natural or at least logical that we'd know what your lung function is prior to taking a piece of it out so that we could at least predict how your lung function would be afterwards. Those things, we, we, we uh, developed 13 of these. When you look at a case-by-case -case basis after the fact, you can assess whether or not that patient has received good quality care. And I think that's important. Well, as a profession, we have a, a professional society called the Society of Thoracic Surgeons. And they have been very instrumental in pushing the quality uh, issue forward. The, our, our cousins in chest surgery, so to speak, the cardiac surgeons, the heart surgeons, have been doing this for many more years. It was mandated many years ago. And as chest surgeons, lung and esophagus surgeons, so-called general thoracic surgeons, we've been a little later to get on that uh, train, but we're there. And I think the work of the STS in developing a more robust database, which is evolving and may hopefully integrate some of these criteria into their database as an assessment of quality, will then be able to later determine whether these quality process issues relate to then better outcome issues. It's important for us to look beyond just mortality. A patient who comes for chest surgery in this day and age expects to survive. They want to know beyond that, what kind of quality are they going to get from their lung surgery?
And I think these criteria help to address that.